Hello, this is Manash Patel from the EIA Capital Group. This is our weekly Chimuka analysis for commodity futures. Today is September 6, 2010. Let's go look. At, oh, before we begin, this is our normal disclaimer. All charts are either in Thinkorswim or TradeStation. Here are my contact details. You can follow us at Twitter at Ichimuku Trading. Uh, and here are my contact details uh, for uh, all the Ichimuku resources. Okay, let's just jump straight to our heat map. Remember on the heat map, what we're looking for is 5, 6, 7, and 8 for bullish for both time frames. And for bearish, we're looking for negative 5 to negative 6, negative 7, 8 for a bearish scenario. If you look at soybean, basically both time frames are bullish. So that's good. We're going to look at soybean, corn are bullish. Uh, there's conflict between sugar now. Okay, so there's conflict there. As far as coffee is concerned, they're trending. Oats are trending bullish. You notice a lot of these commodity futures are bullish trending. Okay, so that's interesting to see, except for sugar. Okay, gold is uh, still bullish. Uh, silver is bullish. Platinum is on the weak side. Okay, and then if you look at oil and gas, basically they're bearish. Okay, so let's go look at some of these commodity futures uh, and think or swim. And let's go and start scrolling down through some of these. And let's go look at light sweet crude oil. We haven't looked at that for a while. Let's go look at the day, weekly time frame first. As you can see from the weekly time frame, we're basically in the cloud, but we're just sitting there going sideways. Nothing at all at all. Uh, the more we go sideways, the higher chance we have of breaking uh, through this cloud to the bottom side. So it's kind of key to see exactly what's going to happen. But um, the more sideways we go every week, in the next couple of weeks, probably by the end of October, uh, there's a possibility crude oil is going to sit there and go down and possibly can sit there and go all the way back down to uh, level here at 57.54. But we just got to wait and see what happens going on the crude oil side. Uh, if you look at the daily time frame, uh, it does look like it sat there, may, came out of the cloud, did a pullback. The pullback still hasn't come in, retested low. This could be a real retest of low. But you're really looking for a trade opportunity right down here. If it breaks that, gets to the 70.49 level, uh, there's a possibility you could sit there and enter a bearish trade uh, and keep your stop very, very tight uh, going down. But if you look at here, there's all these little minor levels all the way down. So really all the way down below until it gets below 67.13, there's all these minor supports too. So crude oil is kind of dangerous right now to look at at all. Um, Let's go look at let's go look at soybeans first. Oh, sorry, let's go look at wheat. Okay, remember we've been talking about wheat. Well, if you look at wheat, if you, let's go look at the weekly time frame. Weekly time frame, we expected to pull back. The pullback was occurring, and then we kind of said, "Look, we were waiting for a pullback confirmation for the pullback." It got very close to the Cajun cent. In fact, on last week at the very bottom, it got all the way down to the Cajun Sin, touched, and then sat there and yanked all the way back up. Let's go look at the daily time frame. Okay, daily time frame, it went below the Cajun Sin and is yet to sit there and come above the Cajun Sin. In fact, the Cajun Sin, Tinkin Sin are inverting. That's not good at all. There's conflict on this completely right now, so I wouldn't look at this trade at all. Be very, very careful on this trade. Definitely, I wouldn't look at a retest going for this trend to continue until it has broken the cadence in on a daily or weekly time frame. Uh, it has to start with a daily time frame, which is 772.48 right now. So this is the level we have to wait for wheat to get back up to in order for us to look a a bullish trade. You can look at lower time frames for bullish scenarios, but be very careful. Remember, these commodity futures. Uh, are very volatile and you could really get your butt handed to you if you don't be very careful okay let's go look at oats oats basically it's the same scenario as wheat it made a huge move up and now it's kind of sitting there waiting it's waiting for these tinkins and cajuns in to kind of equalize and then the question is going to be what's going to happen okay so definitely look to start looking at oats opportunities going to the long side but you got to wait and see what happens before it's for the cajuns and tinkins in to cross Okay, uh, soybeans, soybeans, you notice another huge movement up where the Tinkinson did not follow price and came all the way to resistance. And it's kind of stuck there, so we got to see what happens at resistance there. Um, 
we went for wheat. Let's scroll down. Oh, we got to look at corn. Corn, look at that corn. Corn just broke out. You notice that? Okay. This was a bullish trending scenario, and it just broke out even more last week. It's too late right now. You got to wait. But if you look at the weekly time frame, the t best time to get in this was actually July 12th of this year where it broke out of the cloud on the weekly time frame and since that point it's pretty much been going uh, if you look at it here it did get to this resistance level here kinda of sat there and worked the way around there uh, and broke it once right here came back retested it turned that resistance into support and then took off uh, the next level is at this level right here which is at 465 we're, which we're pretty much at. Uh, if it breaks that level, then it's got a potential of going all the way up to four, 541, but we're looking at 557 as our eventual target for this guy, okay, before it starts reversing go, to go the other side. So look for corn to be bullish. Look for definitely trades for that opportunity to go bullish, but you got to wait and see what happens. 30 year treasury bond, you could kind of see what's happening here. Uh, it was bullish trending. Remember, we told you to be very, very careful uh, because this thing was way, way overextended on the bullish side. And exactly what happened. You know, it took off and came down here. We closed below the Cajunson on the daily time frame. And now it looks like a possible correction is on the way for the U.S. 30-year Treasury bonds. Okay. That's it for this week. If you have any questions, please contact us. Here are my contact details. Have a good week.